Hello friends, welcome to Children's Liturgy. We're going to begin today with a prayer, and this prayer was written for us by the same wonderful people that create our artwork from the Illustrated Ministry. So, let's say this prayer. I'll say it, and you listen, and we'll listen together. It says, Powerful God, Thank you for all the many wonderful works you have done and all the times you have helped your people through hard things. Help us remember you are present with us too, especially in hard times. Amen. I don't know if you feel like you're in a hard time. I was kind of feeling like I was in a hard time this last week or the week before when uh, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not kids are going to be back in school or if we're going to be doing school online and how to best help take care of people. There are a lot of big things going on and big problems to get sorted out. So I, I really appreciated those words to remember that God is with us even in hard times. And those words come from a psalm. The psalms are the poems, the prayers, the hymns that the people of God have written, oh, many, many hundreds of years ago that express their feelings. Sometimes their feelings of sadness, sometimes their feelings of hopefulness, and sometimes, like today, it's a prayer of thanksgiving, saying, thank you, God. Thank you for being with me. If you were to have printed off the coloring sheet, this is the way it will come to you at your house, just black and white. And then you can color it any way you want to. This is one way you might want to use your colors to remember these words, which start with the word, remember. Remember the wonderful works God has done. And you can see right here at the bottom, it says Psalm 105. Remember what a funny word that is, Psalm. It starts with the letter P, but we don't say the P sound. We just say Psalm. Psalm 105. Thank you, God. So the other part that we have that we can always print out at home or if you need me to send you one from, um, from the computer at church, I'm so happy to do that. So here's the bulletin. And this saying on the front says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sometimes we might call out to God when we're in distress or when we feel like we need guidance. You know, I didn't do this uh, unscramble game here, but this is one of my most favorite parts to do. And this is based on the psalm. So if, uh, if you wanted to do the word scramble, you can do that. It also has lots and lots of blank places for us to write in words of things we're praying for or make a picture of something we're praying for. Lots of spots for us to fill in. The back part is, um, is about the story of Jacob, who was the son. Oh, I said that wrong. Joseph, who was the son of Jacob. And... Um, Joseph had a very special coat, and this is the beginning, the top of a coat, and the rest is open for you to fill in. So there are lots of stories to look up and read this week, but I wanted to focus on this idea of what it means to be in a hard time, and what it means to to remember that God is with us and what we might do to get through a hard time. Um, sometimes I think it's easy for us to see someone else who needs help and our hearts 
go out to that person and and it's wonderful to help other people. I just want to make sure that through all of this hard time that we are all taking care of ourselves as much as we're taking care of other people so that we can be strong and um, and still have lots of reserve, lots of extra, lots of extra strength and, and compassion and love that will spill over and help other people at the same time. So I have a really special story to share with you. Um, it's on my computer and we're going to go to that in just a minute. This story is a true story and it's about someone who lived a long time ago. She was born in the 1920s. And it's a young woman who's an African-American woman, and it's about her dream and what she did to help make that dream come true. Now, I hope you all have a little dream somewhere in your heart or in your mind. Maybe it's just the beginning of a dream, but I hope that you're, you're letting your imagination work and you're letting... Um, just letting your thoughts soar and imagine what might be possible. This story is about what happened when a young woman let her imagination soar, let her, her joy and her wonder just take off and something truly wonderful happened for her and, and for some other people because she led the way. She's what we might call a trailblazer, which is someone who does something, maybe the first person to ever do it. So let's listen to this story about this young woman and um, just see what happened in her life. And then maybe we can talk about it when it's over. This book is called Catching the Moon. Here we go. Welcome to the Storyline Online, brought to you by the SAG Foundation. I'm Kevin Costner, and this is... Jillian Estelle. And we're going to read to you a book today, and it's called... You might want to show them the book. What's it called? It's called Catching the Moon by Crystal Hubbard, illustrated by Randy Duberk. And it's a story of a young girl's baseball dream. Marcinia Lyle loved baseball. She loved the powdery taste of dust clouds as she slid through them. She loved the way the sun heated her hair as she crouched in the outfield waiting for fly balls. And she loved the sting in her palm as a baseball slammed into it right before tagging out a runner. If there was anything in the world better than baseball, Marcinia didn't know it. She dreamed of growing up to be a professional ball player so she could play ball all the time. I wish I knew why you liked baseball so much, Mama sighed as she gently washed Marcinia's hair. Marcinia shrugged. Mama often questioned Marcinia's interest in baseball, particularly when washing field dirt from her hair. It's just fun, Marcinia said, giving her mother the same response as she always did. Playing dolls is fun, Mama said. Marcinia blew a puff of lather from her palm. Not as much fun as baseball. After Marcinia crawled into bed, Papa appeared in the doorway. What did you learn in school today, he asked. Um, Marcinia thought for a moment. Some history. Hmm, Papa crossed his arms. And how did your team do in the game after school? Harold got a triple in his first at bat, and Clarence tagged out two runners, Marcinia said eagerly. I struck out my first time at the bat. But then, I caught a deep fly ball that would have scored the tying run for the other team. If I'd missed it, we won 11 to 10. Marcinia's smile gleamed like the noonday sun as she shared the details of her victory. We won the game, Marcinia said at once more. And you also ripped another dress, Papa said, dismayed. Then he kissed Marcinia's cheek and turned off the light, leaving her alone with the moonlight and shadows in her dreams of becoming a baseball player. The tiny house was still. Marcinia could almost hear her mother's needle and thread moving through the fabric as she sat at the kitchen table mending Marcinia's dress. 
After a while, Marcinia heard her papa's voice. I wish she would think about school as much as she thinks on baseball. She wants to be a ball player when she grows up, Mama said with a sad chuckle. I just want her to be happy. She'll be what every other girl in this neighborhood will be, Papa grumbled. A teacher, a nurse, or a maid, Mama said softly. I'm going to score three runs tomorrow. Marcina promised the darkness as she clapped her hands over her ears. I'm going to hit a home run, too. The next day after school, Marcina went to the playground. The other girls stayed on the hardtop to play hopscotch, jump rope, or jacks. The boys were huddled at the mound talking quietly. They cast excited glances at the man who was watching the field from the bleachers. Do you know who he is? Harold asked Marcini as she joined the group. He tipped his head toward the man. That there is Mr. Gabby Street. He's running a baseball day camp at this summer. Marcini knew about Gabby Street. He was the manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. He had led the Cardinals to the National League pennant in 1930 and the Cardinals had topped the next year by winning the 1931 World Series. What's he want? Marcina asked. Kids for his baseball camp, Harold said. It's going to be right here on the field every day except Sunday. Sundays are game days. What is the cost? Marcina asked. It's free. It's free, said Clarence. All you need is your own glove and baseball cleats, Harold added. Marcina could hardly contain her excitement. She would do anything to be one of the players in Mr. Street's camp. That afternoon, Marcinia played with purpose. She scooped up grounders, catching them into her body to make sure they didn't bounce away. She slid into second, keeping so low she wouldn't be tagged. She kept her eyes on each pitch, waiting for a good one to send over the fence. She scored three runs just like she wanted and hit a home run. When Mr. Street approached the players after the game, Marcinia crowded in close so he could see her. I just saw some good ball, Mr. Street said, smiling. Who wants to come to my baseball camp and really learn how to play this game? Every hand went up. Mr. Street shook them all. He shook Marcinia's hand last. You've got a good arm, little miss, and you run fast, he said. But I don't take girls in my camp. Marcinia looked down so no one would see her disappointment. She began striking dust from her dress. Hey, Marcinia has been playing ball with us since we were little kids, Harold told Mr. Street. She's the only player we got who ever steals bases, Clarence said. Marcinia was pleased that her friends had come to her defense, but Mr. Street didn't change his mind. As she walked home, she thought about how those very same boys had teased her when she first started playing baseball with them. Then they saw that she could run, hit, and throw as well as they could. The teasing stopped. They had let her play. Marcinia decided to give Mr. Street a reason to change his mind. Every day, Marcinia played baseball, and every day, Mr. Street refused to invite her to his camp. Then came a day when Marcinia got tired of hearing him say, I don't take girls in my camp. That day, when she was on third base in the ninth inning of a tie game, Marcinia decided to take the biggest chance in all of baseball. She decided to steal home. When the pitcher drew back his arm to throw the ball to Harold, Marcinia launched into motion. The catcher snared the pitch in his glove and ran towards Marcinia to tag her out. Marcinia doubled back towards third. When the catcher threw the ball back to the third baseman, Marcinia turned and bolted toward home plate. As the ball sailed above her head, Marcinia pumped her arms and knees harder. With the ball speeding toward home, Marcinia dropped her weight and slid into home plate. She had stolen home and scored the winning run. While her teammates celebrated their victory, Marcinia planted her hands on her hips and faced Mr. Street. I'm a baseball player, she said. I want to learn to play this game as well as I can. May I come to your camp? Well, little miss, if you can steal home, you can probably do anything you set your mind to, Mr. Street said. You can come to my camp, as long as you have your own equipment. When Marcinia told her parents the good news about the camp that evening, her father was not pleased. 
I don't like you acting like such a tomboy, he said with a snap of his evening paper. Besides, you know we don't have money to spend The on camp's it. free, Marcina said excitedly. Equipment isn't free, Papa said. I have a glove, Marcina said. Harold gave me his old one. You'll need cleats, and we don't have money for those, Papa added. So unless you're prepared to get them yourself, I think you'll have to forget about that camp. With another snap of Papa's newspaper, Marcinia felt her dream move out of reach. Mr. Street was at the field the next time Marcinia played. Before the game, she mustered all her strength to keep from crying. Mr. Street, she said, I can't come to your camp. I don't have cleats and my father says we can't afford them, but thank you for inviting me. Although she was sad, Marcinia played as well as she always had. She loved baseball too much not to play with all her heart. Unable to sleep, Marcinia gazed through her window at the full moon glowing in the sky. It was so round and bright, like a brand new baseball. She reached to the floor and took up her baseball glove. She put it on and punched the pocket as if the moon would drop into it like so many fly balls had before. Marcini wondered sadly if Papa was right. Maybe girls didn't grow up to be ball players after all. But playing baseball was her dream. Marcini couldn't imagine doing anything else. The next day after school, Marcini was the first one at the playing field. Mr. Street was already there. And he waved Marcini over. You're a good ball player, Marcini, he said. I want go good ball players for my camp. He handed Marcini a box and he watched as she opened it. Her eyes widened as she pulled out shoe with each hand. These weren't just any shoes, these were real baseball cleats. Thank you, Mr. Street, Marcina was so excited she could barely squeeze out the words. She hugged the shoe to her chest. They were even better than stealing home. Don't you have a game to play, Mr. Street said, nodding towards the field. Yes, I do, Marcina replied happily. Her fingers flew as she unbuckled her street shoes and laced on her new cleats. They fit perfectly. She ran in them. She jumped in them. She caught and slid in them. And she hit a home run in them. After the game, the boys rushed to Mr. Street, talking over one another about the game. Marcinia lingered at home plate. She stared at her feet, proud of the new scuffs and smudges on her shoes. They had been a little stiff at first, but now that she had played a good game of baseball in them, the cleats were exactly the way she wanted them to be. Mr. Street excused himself from the crowd of boys. I look forward to seeing you in my camp, he said to Marcinia. She gave him a hopeful smile, but Marcinia knew she still had one more person to convince. Before she could officially accept Mr. Street's invitation, she ran home and waited anxiously for her father to return from work. As soon as her father arrived, Marcinia showed him her new cleats. Now, Marcinia, where, where did you get those, where did you get those shoes, Papa asked sternly. Mr. Street gave them to me, Marcinia said. He wants me to come to his baseball camp. Mm -hmm. Papa looked down at Marcinia's baseball cleats, which were already scuffed and dusted with field dirt. You must be a pretty good ball player for an important man like Mr. Street to buy you those shoes, he admitted. Then he smiled. You know I don't like charity, but I reckon we can't give those shoes back in this state. I'll have to thank Mr. Street for his generosity when I take you down to that baseball camp. Marcina could hardly believe her ears. Papa had agreed. Her chest filled with joy, and she threw her arms around her father, hugging him hard. You'll see how good I am, she cried. Marcini felt as proud and happy as if she reached right up in the sky and caught the moon in her glove. She was on her way to becoming a real baseball player. She would make her dream come true. Good story. It's a great story. You know what's great about this story is it's also, it's also true. This, this little girl is real and grew up to be a professional baseball player. You know, dreams are... Dreams are important, and um, sometimes you can find dreams in books, 
And that's what makes this little story so special. You know, it's important to dream. And you can be a lot of things in your life. Not just a baseball player, but you could also be the person that wrote this book someday. You can be a doctor, you can be a lot of things. That's what I love about books. You know, they take us to a place. We can read them in the car, we can read them in our room. You know, they, books can take you around the world and you never leave your house. When I think of a lot of the great things that have come to me in my life, a lot of them have come from books, just like this. I think if you start reading as young as you guys are, you're going to have a really great life. Catching the moon. That must have been really exciting. Um, now the little girl's name was Marcinia. Marcinia, I think is the way you say that. When she grew up, she became a professional baseball player. And she was known by the name Tony Stone. That was her, her professional baseball name, Tony Stone. T-O-N-I, Tony. Tony Stone. And I wanted to show you, I'm going to close this for now, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of what she looked like. So here's Tony, and she, throughout her career, she played with several different teams. And at the time that Tony was playing baseball, black players and white players did not play together. Most of the time, um, people were still living very segregated lives, and black people and white people did not share a lot of the same things. Um, they, they couldn't play on the same baseball team. So there, were, uh, there was a, a league of uh, baseball teams called the Negro League, the American Negro League, which is a, a way that people who were um, African American used to be identified. So she played on a couple of different teams. Here she is when she's throwing the ball and she's stretching so far. She looks like she's giving it all she's got. I thought about how much Tony wanted to play baseball and how much she wanted to be a baseball player and that she she just did everything she could. She tried to be the best baseball player that she could be. She tried to learn the most that she could about baseball. And the word that I thought of, which is a word it's a word that you might uh, find referenced as a virtue. It's not in this particular virtue guide that, that we often look at, but it, um, but it is a virtue. And that word is the virtue of devotion. Devotion. So I felt like Tony was very devoted to this dream that she had. And I'm just going to um, let you look at that for a second. Part of devotion is part of devotion is that it's a commitment to something that you really care about. So it's it's almost like caring about something and having it mean means something very deep, deep to your heart and your soul. Um, and I got to thinking about Tony and how she was devoted to playing baseball, but I think she was devoted to being the best person that she could be. 
and she felt that using all of her gifts, and she was such a good baseball player, using all of those gifts is what she was called to do in her life. So sometimes in church, you might hear that kind of language that we're called, we're called to be God's people in the world. Well, what, you might wonder, what does that mean? One part of what I think that means is learning to um, think deeply about what's important to you in your life and what gifts um, you were given, what gifts you have inside of yourself that give you joy, that help you learn, that help you grow, that help you do something good for someone else. All those things coming together. What is my yes? Do you remember in the nativity play at Christmas time, the angel comes to Mary and offers Mary this good news that she's going to have this child, this wonderful child from God. And in the story, Mary says, yes, yes. That she understood that her whole life had this very special meaning. Well. All of our lives are different, but they're all special and they all have meaning. So what I just want to invite you to think about while you grow up, whether or not you grow up to be a baseball player, not all of us do, but you might think about what is my yes? What is it that is deep inside of me? And that's something that may change or grow as you change and grow. So. What calls to me so strongly that I cannot resist knowing that it is truly mine to do? This is a nice picture of, of Tony. Just, just you can see her face and see her smiling. Sometimes when we're doing something really important, it might be really, really hard. But at some level, deep down, if we're doing what's really right for us to be doing, I think there's that, that uh, smile, that sense of God's peace deep inside of us. You might get tired. You might get frustrated. You might need to take a hot bath or, you know, take a nap and start over the next day. But if you know that your yes is to be a teacher, if your yes is to be a doctor, if your yes is to be, hmm, let's see, a chef, an engineer, a ballet dancer, a piano teacher, a, um, shout out some things at, at, the, at the computer right now, what else, um, a midwife, a city planner, a bus driver, what is your yes? What is that special thing that you can do in the world that brings you joy, that comes from a piece of love, a, a, a piece of your heart and your soul, something that's deep down inside of you that you have to share with the world? So Tony, um, Tony Stone was that kind of a person. She had a dream, and it was at a time when. There weren't any other people, no other women playing professional baseball who were African American. And she was the first. And she didn't let that stop her. She didn't let the fact that nobody else was doing it stop her. Because she knew deep down inside that was her yes. So um, I, I just want to invite you through this crazy time we're living in, and you might have extra time because you're home and your schooling is at home. Maybe take some time, lay down on the grass outside, look at the clouds, and think about what is your yes? What is God calling to you? What is um, what's giving you joy? What do you want to learn about? What are you curious about? All those things help make up your yes in life. So, one more time. 
let's say thank you to God because it's with God's help that all things are possible. Loving God, powerful God, thank you for all the many wonderful works you have done and all the times you have helped your people through hard things. Help us remember you are present with us too, especially in hard times. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Share your love and your light in the world. And I'll see you next time. Bye now.